Hi guys, thanks for joining me here today at the Poke Glow. Uh, but today's video is going to be a little bit different than normal. Normally we do like pack openings and stuff like that. Today we're not going to do that. <clears throat> today we're gonna actually going to talk about how to sell Pokemon cards on eBay. Because, let's just face it, as, as collectors, you're going to end up with a lot of cards that you probably don't want. A lot of bulk, doubles, cards you just don't like, you know? And eventually, you're probably going to come across some cards that are worth some money, that have value, and that you might want to sell just so you can pick up more product. Because Pokemon, Pokemon cards in general are just expensive. Like, that's just the way it is. And collecting become, can become very expensive. So eventually, you're going to want to sell some cards. Uh, I'm going to talk specifically about eBay because I've sold a lot of cards on eBay now. I've started selling cards on eBay around June, and I think I have over 200 sales on there now, um, and over like $4,000 worth of value of sales. Now, this is not just single cards, though. I've been selling a lot of sealed, sealed product like booster boxes and um, booster packs and stuff like that. So that's why the value is so high. But yeah, let's just get right into it. Also, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Shows you guys are care. Shows you guys are listening. Um, subscriber count, we're at 66 out of 100 now. At 100, we're doing the Chilling Rain ETB giveaway. So thank you guys. Really support. Really appreciate the support. Um, yeah, and... Uh, it's helping the, the channel grow. So thank you guys. <clears throat> so this is kind of strange because I'm not using my phone to record like me opening up packs. So I actually have my phone for once. And for the longest time, I was always trying to reach my phone knowing or unknowing, knowing and unknowing that I, I'm actually using the phone to record. Yeah. So first things first, um, you're going to want to make an eBay account, right? I mean... That's, that's pretty much a given. And making an eBay account is not as difficult as you might think. You are going to have to um, like attach your bank account to it. That's how they're going to deposit money to your account after you sell um, your cards. Um, full disclosure, so when you sell things on eBay, it's going to be taxed. You're not going to pay the tax. Um, whoever buys the cards are going to pay the tax. But you are going to be responsible for shipping um, whatever you sell on there. So that kind of goes into um, step two. But with that being said, eBay is also going to charge you money off of the total amount of what the sell cost. So if I sell something for a dollar and whoever buys it has to pay a tax of eight cents. So the total sale of that card was a dollar and eight cents. And off of that dollar and eight cents, I'm pretty sure this is how it is all across the board. It might be different by state, but I don't think it is. I think all across the board for selling collectibles like cards and stuff, they charge you 12.9%. So if we do the math here, dollar eight. And then you subtract 12.9%, which is roughly about 14 cents if you round up. Um, you end up with 94 cents. So that card that you initially listed for a dollar will end up being um, 94 cents that you receive. But we have to go further into that because it's not that simple. Because then you got to include your um, shipping fees. Uh, which basically is like your packaging and materials that cost to ship and what it costs to actually ship the card. Um, so I think now we can move on to step number two. Um, so first, you sign up for eBay, link up your bank, bank account. Um, yeah. Um, actually, before that, before we go to step number two, I'm going to include like pre-purchasing all of your shipping material because um, you don't you want to pay the least amount 
right? You want to pay the least amount for your shipping materials. That way you can get the most amount when you actually ship and sell a card. So um, shipping materials, you want to buy everything in bulk. Because if you buy everything in bulk, it's going to come out cheaper uh, for everything that you buy. And you're probably going to go through it all, it, depending on how serious of a collector you are and you know how big of a hobby this is to you, or if it's your business or if you want to make it your business, you're definitely going to want to buy in bulk. Otherwise, you're going to be um, spending just way too much on shipping stuff and you're not really going to make that much money from selling your cards, um, depending on how often you sell. But let's say you're going to sell a lot, then you definitely want to buy in bulk. If you're not going to sell that much, I guess you can just get stuff from Walmart or maybe even Sam's Club. You probably still get a decent discount at Sam's Club or Costco or something like that for some of your shipping materials. So basically, just, just get your shipping materials before you decide to sell anything. Just have it, basically. Okay, so uh, step number two is you're going to post your listings. Now, posting your listings... Um, it's pretty simple. They have it done pretty well on eBay for the most part. Uh, as a new seller, I think they give you a, a limit to how much you can sell and how much value you could sell. So I think when you start off, you can sell about 250 items for free, like free listing, should I say. You can list 250 items uh, for free until they charge you um, a, a fee if you go over that. Now, when I say 250 items, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can do 250 separate listings. I mean, you can, but let's say you sell, let's just throw this out there. It's kind of ridiculous, but let's say you have 250 of the same booster box or ETB. So you'll create one listing and you can put a quantity of 250 and that's your whole 250 listings right there. Um, so keep that in mind. It's just something to know. Um, and then the value, I think they give you like $25,000 worth of value that you could sell before they take some type of fee as well. But I mean, if you're selling that much, like I don't think you're really too worried about it. That's a lot of money. Um, and that's per one month. A after every month it renews. So we're going to post your listings. That's how many listings you can post. Um, you're going to put title and description for your uh, listing. eBay has it done pretty well where if you post, let's say you're going to post a Charizard VMAX um, shiny, right? From, uh, I think, Shining Fates. So you'll type in, like, shiny Charizard VMAX when it comes to listing, and it'll actually, like, bring together or populate other listings that other people have done. And you can click on that listing that someone else has already done and probably sold. And it'll take its title, like word per verbatim, like word for word, and make your title. And it'll also take the description. Well, actually, not the description. It'll take like the details, like item details of that card. So it'll be like the name of the card, um, the attributes, fire. Uh, is it holographic? Is it an ultra rare? All these things, right? And it'll just take all that too. That way you don't have to do that. So listing an item can be super quick. All you have to do really is take a picture. Um, I like to take a picture front and back over something that's black. That way if, when they're looking at it, they can see any whiting around the edges and people know exactly what they're buying. Um, when you list it, I only do two pictures per card, front and back um, over something that's black so they can see. And good lighting, obviously. Then you just choose how much you want to sell it for. But you could sell it as like buy it now, which is like flat, you know, it's going to be $10. You could buy it for $10. Or you can even put like uh, best offer where someone can shoot you an offer. And if you like it, you can accept it. I never use that function. And then you can do an auction where people can bid on it. And you can start at an opening bid, usually for... Um, for cards, like on the lower end of value, they kind of recommend starting at 99 cents. And then people, and then you can choose up to like seven days, I think, maybe even nine, but I think it's seven uh, max. How long people have to necessarily kind of keep an eye on this card and bid on it until the bidding ends. Um, personally, I don't like using that because I've done it before and I've sold things for super cheap. Um, 
But if you want to sell things quickly, it makes sure you know everyone's you're going to sell it, even if it's for super cheap. Um, then do like a bidding. Lastly, uh, when it comes to listings, then you're going to go into um, shipping, how it's going to get shipped. And then I have like tips and tricks that I will talk about at the end of this video if you stick around long enough. And maybe I'll do like timestamps so you can kind of just skip through and find the part that you're looking for. But shipping, if you're selling, and this is why I think it's important that I make this video now in 2022 and it's like pretty recent and I'm selling cards every single day. I mean, I shipped out three cards this morning. Um, so in 2022, right now, they have a program, and I think this kind of started not too long ago, where if you sell a trading card or some type of collectible that's pretty small and low in weight, I don't, I don't think it's just limited to trading cards, but let's talk about the trading card portion of it. Um, and it's worth $20 or less, or you're selling it for $20 or less, they have what's called an eBay standard um, shipping method. Right, so basically, what that is, it's an eBay standard envelope. Sorry, it's an eBay standard envelope shipping method, where they give you like pretty much a standard size envelope. I think I like to use like a four by six. Um, I think it fits the cards much better in there than as long. When you put a label on it, um, it fits like perfectly on there. I'm pretty sure it's like a four by six or four by seven um, envelope. Okay, I'm sorry, it's fifty seven cents. Per envelope that weighs up to a maximum of three ounces, I think, that fits that standard size and is skinny enough to go through the machines. Like, it, can't, it has dimensions on all this stuff. But anyway, so 57 cents for the first ounce. Two ounces then becomes 81 cents, so it's not too much more. And then three ounces becomes a dollar five. I'm pretty sure at four ounces, you're no longer eligible for this type of shipping. Yeah, so up to three ounces, and it's like a dollar five, which is crazy because it's actually super, super cheap, which you're about to see. It's super, super cheap compared to all the other shipping methods. So it actually makes selling cards that are only worth like $2 actually viable. Um, I think I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to shipping. There's three methods to ship a card or who's responsible, should I say, for this. You can either charge the buyer a fee, like a flat fee, <clears throat> excuse me, a flat fee for uh, whatever it is that you're shipping, and you can kind of post whatever you want. You put like $5 flat fee to ship this to you, or you can do free shipping um, for buyer. So basically when it's free shipping for buyer, it's just you pay whatever the, the fee is. And I think the last method is like a estimated value that they think it's going to be depending on what shipping method you use. So then now we'll go back to what we're talking about on the shipping methods. So I talked about one, which is great when you're selling singles um, that, that are worth $20 or less, which a lot of the, most of the cards are. So you can actually ship a card for extremely cheap. Okay. So there's other ways to ship ship cards, right? There's basically four different services that you can use. There's USPS, which is like the United States Postal Service. There's UPS, which is the brown um, carriers that you see all the time. FedEx, and there's eBay, but eBay is not their own service. What they do is they, co they collaborate with these other um, cert like shipping or carriers um, to come up with their, their own special pricing. First one we already talked about was which was that eBay uh, standard envelope. That's something that goes through USPS. I should have mentioned that earlier. So some of these other services um, that uh, eBay uses, basically that collaborates with these other carriers, gives you discounted rates. Um, I mean the cheapest one is like three sixty two. It could range from that to. Pretty expensive ones, like $48 for FedEx overnight. But these are pretty much discounted prices that eBay has that they have worked out with these carriers. Then you could choose, um, yeah, which one you want to do and what you talk to your buyer about. 
or what's been agreed upon or if it's just what you listed and there's no other talking of shipment after that, then you just ship the way that you listed that you would ship it for. Or you can even upgrade it, upgrade them the shipping for free if that's something that you want to do. For whatever reason. Like there was one time when one of the buyers said like, man, I really would like to buy three of these um, booster boxes, but I really need them really quickly. Uh, is there something you could do? And because he bought three of them, to me, it saves me money because you're not paying for separate shipping for each one of these booster boxes. So, if, and it wasn't too much more to ship it like a little bit faster, like two day shipping. So I just upgraded the shipping for him. And yeah, just things like that. Now, when you ship things, you're responsible. It's fully your responsibility to take this to wherever it's going for it to get shipped out. <clears throat> so if you chose USPS, now, for me, when I do the eBay standard envelope shipping method, there's like a security mailbox in my community where I just put everything in there and that's just within my community and I don't actually have to go to the post office for that shipping method. Now, if I'm shipping like packages, like first class uh, package, then I would have to take this to the post office. Um, UPS... FedEx, there's kind of no way around that. You just got to take it to some UPS or FedEx place. Now, I will say this, and I don't recommend it, but UPS and FedEx is coming through my neighborhood all the time. And one time I, I caught UPS van outside, and I asked him if he could take my UPS packages for me, which he did. But I asked him to scan it in front of me, so I knew that it was already in a system. And I like to trust everyone, but you just never know. You know, you hand a package to someone who's to say that they're going to take care of it, you know, and take it to where it needs to go and all that stuff. Um, so that's shipping. If you have any questions about this, guys, too, leave leave a comment underneath. I'm more than willing and happy to help you guys out with this. Um, I was new at one point with all this, too, and it seemed overwhelming to me uh, in the beginning. Now it's like second nature. Okay, so we pretty much skipped over step number three. After you post your listing, you just have to wait for your card to sell. Um, I think it took me like two to three weeks. Maybe two. Maybe three, three seems to exaggerate. I think it took me th two weeks to sell something finally on eBay. It was a slow start. Maybe it was like a week and a half. And I was like, oh, my God, am I ever going to sell this stuff? Um, but uh, it did sell. It's how you should price your Pokemon cards. Um, there's two different ways, right? If you have American Pokemon cards or English Pokemon, should I say, there's a website called TCG player. And it, for the majority has every single Pokemon card ever made. And it'll tell you price of what the, what you should, um, sell it for, like what the market price is. Now, with that being said, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone's going to buy it for that amount. Right, it just means that's what people have sold it for recently, and that's how they gather that information. Um, but that's a great, it's a great tool. It's a great way. I list everything I list going off of TCG Player, um, except for my Japanese stuff because they don't. To my knowledge, they don't really give you prices for Japanese Pokemon cards. So I found a website, and it's called Poke Data. Pokedata.io, and this place actually uh, gives you prices for not only English, but also Japanese sets, all the way back to Collection Sun SM15, so Sun and Moon um, 15, but nothing before that, so it doesn't look like, like any EX or anything like that, so if you want to look up for EX stuff, another great way, method to kind of figure out what you're going to list something for is through eBay itself. And I think that's how most of these places actually come up with their prices. They take a certain card or name of a card or whatever, what have you. And they look it up on eBay and they look up all of the times it's been sold. So there's a way to do that. You just have to look for it on there under tools or something like that. And it's just going to show you like what has sold 
and it'll tell you like within the last 90 days what has what card you're looking for has sold um and for how much it's sold so that's kind of another way to kind of see where market prices and how to probably price your pokemon cards okay so we've pretty much gone over everything now how to ship things whose responsibility is to ship things how to list on your listing who's going to take care of the shipping like for me too personally i always do free shipping and i kind of just include it in the cost the overall cost of what my listing is so yeah let's say a car is worth six dollars i know it's going to cost me a dollar something to get this out the door and into this person's hand so then i'll just say i'm selling this for 750 plus free shipping that's just the way i do it you can do it any way you want i mean you can charge people shipping if you like i think just for me it helps get things out the door uh, da, 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 so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, paying for postage. This is kind of like step number five. It's actually just kind of tips and tricks. I'm gonna go over a few things here. Um, that I kind of wanted to talk about earlier, but I'm gonna do it now. So when I buy stuff in bulk, and I'll tell you exactly what I paid for all this stuff. So here you got top loaders. Every time I ship a card out the door. Like a single card, um, I always include one top loader. I usually put the main card in the top loader. Inside of a money bag, or sorry, a team bag, not a money bag. And every card is going to be sleeved with a penny sleeve. So if you don't know what all this stuff is, I'll go over it in a, in a second. A penny sleeve, basically, it's uh, kind of self-explanatory. It's a sleeve that they're pretty cheap. They're kind of, you know, really only worth a couple cents. Uh, and you can get a bunch of them um, for a good price. And you just put them over all your all your cards that you want to protect. And a top loader is a plastic piece that you would essentially put a card in if you want it to be more protected. And then a team bag, which I would put all the contents in. I think you can put up to like 50 cards in here, not top loaded. Top loaded, I have no idea. But 50 cars not top loaded, or I'd like to put top loaded and not top loaded in there. And then you can seal it all up. I like to put my business cards in these two, stick it in the envelope, and uh, get it out the door. I actually buy all this stuff from eBay. All right, here we go. So these top loaders, uh, yeah, 25. So you get 100 and 100, 33.99. You get 33.99, divide that by two. Sixteen ninety five, um, so it costs you technically, but not technically, hundred of these and hundred of these individually it would cost you sixteen ninety five. So then you divide that by hundred. So each thing, when you average them out together, will cost about sixteen cents. Now, if you buy them separately, these are worth they're they cost so much more than these penny sleeves, and these will be so much less than these. Just just saying that these are like kind of like 20 cents if you buy in bulk and these are really just a few cents if you buy in bulk but if you're selling booster boxes or etbs and whatnot then you're gonna need something bigger so i bought these boxes these are six by six by six and they're perfect for uh booster boxes if you're selling japanese you can fill like three of the 30 pack um booster boxes on there if you're selling the 20 pack booster boxes, the rectangular ones, you can fit like four of them in there. American, I haven't really sold American. I think, I think you're pretty sure you can fit like two of them in there, maybe even three, no problem. Um, so I paid $44 and 51 cents for a hundred of these. So each one of these boxes roughly cost me 44 cents. I'm just going to give you one more example here. Just so you can get an idea of like what things are going to cost you and how much it's going to cost you to get things out the door. So these bags here, these are perfect. Um, I'll tell you the size here. I think these are like a 4x7 as well, 4x8. And they're, it's a padded bubble mailer. So when you look inside, there's bubbles all lined up in there to help protect your, your, your packages. 
these are good for like PSA cards, maybe not a whole bunch of them. Um, yeah, anything you want to sell that's, you know, probably more value, you probably want to put in one of these. Uh, these will not work technically by the standards of eBay for an eBay standard envelope. Now, I will say I have shipped using that service in one of these and it did get to the guy but it specifically says no bubble mailers, but I did it anyways one time and the guy actually got it. I, I, I talked to him, made sure he got it and stuff. Anyway, so you can get um, these in bulk. 200 is 4083. So 4083 divided by 200. So each one of these comes out to 20 cents. So you just gotta add all this stuff together. Let's say this is 20 cents. 20 cents for one of these and let's just say it's going to cost you three bucks um so what is that 40 it's going to cost you like four dollars to get something out the door if you're using first class package um and you're using this stuff and you're gonna have to pay for it or someone's gonna have to pay for it so you either charge the person for it or whatever, but just throw that in to whatever you think you're going to get back. Um, I think that's it, guys. Oh, sorry. One last trick to selling stuff on eBay. And I'll kind of just do a really fast, quick recap of all of this. But my final trip, uh, tip or trick is to get a label printer. Uh, I purchased the printer. I'll put it right here. It's called the Dymo. Um, it was pretty expensive, but I'm really glad I got it because you can actually print labels. You can purchase all the shipping, um, directly through eBay. So they just take it out of like your profit basically. Um, yeah. And then you can just print the label, the, the postage and you just stick it right to your package and then you just drop it off wherever you go. You don't got to wait in line, get tracking numbers, this or that, yada, yada, fill it out. At the, at the post office or UPS or FedEx or what have you. You can just do it all directly through eBay. Connect your Dymo to your computer. It's going to print the label. You just slap it on to your package. The Dymo that I bought was like $400, um, but it's, uh, it's a thermal printer, which basically means they don't use ink, so you never had to buy ink for it. All you have to do is buy the little sticky notes, uh, like the labels, and that's it. I think it's basically paid for itself by now at this point because otherwise you're going to have to print labels out somehow and use tape and it just looks tacky. It doesn't look good. It's not very professional. All right, guys. Um, quick, repack. quick recap. Sign up for eBay. Step number one. Um, get your shipping materials. Step number two. Post your listings. Step number three. Wait for things to sell. Uh, step number four. Step number five, when things have sold, package it all up uh, and pay for shipping some way, somehow. And basically step number six will just be drop it off the carrier and have the carrier take it to wherever it's going. And boom, you've sold Pokemon cards on eBay. I know this is a lot of information, guys. I'm sorry, but I just want to explain everything very thoroughly. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoy the, the rest of your day. We're creeping. We're creeping up to 100. So we're going to give this away pretty soon to one lucky winner. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.